Virginia is the most recent state to pass a, uh, a fairly radical abortion ban. And uh, Jim Justice, the governor, I believe, has not yet signed it into law. But uh, this, is, this is a big deal, and, and West Virginia is really struggling with this. Um, so I, I wanted to get a, a West Virginia voice on to talk, talk about this issue. And this, uh, Ixia Vega is a member of the Morgantown City Council, uh, representing the third ward of uh, the city of Morgantown, West Virginia, a community organizer, Planned Parenthood South Atlantic and Planned Parenthood uh, Votes, uh, the organization she works with, South Atlantic and West Virginia. Um, she's not only the youngest member of the Morgantown City Council ever, she's the only Latina to serve in this city in this capacity as well. At 23, she offered herself up as a writing candidate in the April 27th election to represent the third ward, and to her surprise, she won. She's also a field organizer for Planned Parenthood. Ixia Vega, welcome to the program, and uh, tell us about this abortion ban and, and how it's being received by the citizens of West Virginia. Hello, thank you so much for having me. Um, you know, a lot of folks in West Virginia are devastated that this decision has come down. Uh, West Virginia is already a state that struggles to find health care and find affordable health care for its citizens and its residents. And this ban will only add another barrier to folks seeking reproductive health care in the state. So uh, I mean, I'm assuming you're expecting Governor Justice to sign it. How how are uh, presumably Democrats and I'm, I'm thinking probably a lot of independents, maybe even some Republicans, you know, what's the game plan here to overturn it? You know, he actually already did sign it. Oh, he did. Um, he did sign it. Um, it seemed to have happened the day that the vote happened. There was no announcement. It kept people, uh, it kept politicians making decisions between behind closed doors and keeping the public from having an opinion and uh, keeping the public from being able to take action to see if this could be solved. But the governor did decide to sign this without the notice of everybody else. He announced it during, very casually, during a COVID press release. So oh, it was okay. very devastating for us. So the plan to, to counter this? You know, we have some really great folks on the ground, uh, Delegate Daniel Walker, Delegate Evan Hansen, and a few other of the few great West Virginia Democrats that we have here in the state have been working tirelessly to see what we can do to make sure that this will not seriously impact everybody and that we could maybe find a solution to this. Uh, right now, you know, West Virginia is lucky enough that municipalities have a little bit more of a capacity to make sure that we can protect the rest of reproductive health care. But right now, it seems that we are still trying to figure out the details on what we can do, especially since half of us did not know that it had been signed until it was announced almost a week later. Wow. Wow. Um, what what do you think is going to be the political impact of this in West Virginia? Is you know, I've I've visited West Virginia a number of times. A couple of very good friends of mine, you know, uh, Troy Miller. In fact, he used to be the producer of this program. Um, or a producer of this program uh, lives there, and and uh, you know writes and things, and and I, I just love West Virginia. It seems it seems like there's so much opportunity there. Could this be the thing that wakes people up to the to the toxicity of the GOP in that state? In your state, you know, I really think it could be. The one thing about West Virginians is that the GOP has taken this opportunity to share this narrative that all West Virginians are anti-abortion, that West Virginians um, do not like abortion, do not have abortions, but that is not the case. What West Virginians value is being able to make personal decisions for themselves, their bodies, their families, and the fact that this right has been taken away and stripped away from so many West Virginians, um, I think is a really rude awakening. I think it also diminishes the fact that regardless of political party, all people have need access to abortion. All people can have abortions. Uh, that includes Republicans, that includes independents. And the reality is that many of these folks that are serving on the GOP this may not be a big deal to them because if they need to or if somebody in their family needs one, they can still access an abortion. By going out of state. They've, in other words, they're wealthy enough to, to hop on a plane. 
Exactly. They have the privilege to take the time off. They have the resources to connect them with folks from other states, but other regular people don't have that access, especially right. our communities of color um, here in West Virginia and our poor communities in West Virginia. I know that in some communities in some red states, I've, I've heard this uh, out of uh, specifically Indiana and Ohio. I don't know about other states. Um, that some of the organizations, I'm not sure if Planned Parenthood specifically is involved in this. Um, uh, apparently there's some organizations just like coming out of nowhere, you know, that, that are collecting money so that they can provide um, airplane tickets and, and hotel vouchers and things to women who do need to leave the state to get an abortion. Is there anything like that happening in West Virginia? How, how is Planned Parenthood, you're, you're very involved with Planned Parenthood, how, how is Planned Parenthood reacting to this? Yeah, so Planned Parenthood here in West Virginia was never a provider of abortions. Um, the Women's Health Center of West Virginia, our small and mighty clinic, was the provider for abortions. Planned Parenthood mostly took the opportunity to make sure that we were supporting those folks, but we were helping support them by uplifting their abortion funds and other abortion funds throughout the state. We recognize that we're not necessarily the leaders on this, but we are more than happy to support with any resources that we have. And in West Virginia, we have the Choice Fund that is held by the Women's Health Center of West Virginia to help folks pay for abortions. Um, this used to be to help pay for abortions, I think more specifically for the clinic, but now that the clinic is no longer um, providing abortions that it will be moving to other folks to access it somewhere else. Holler Health Justice is also an amazing on the group ground um, that has been organizing for years to make sure that folks are able to access abortions, whether that means monetarily, childcare, um, or other financial help. They've been doing that for a very long time. So those are the groups that we've been uplifting the most. These folks have been vetted, have been working on this for a very long time, either in the reproductive health care field or just organizing in West Virginia. So those are the folks to definitely trust for that. Yeah, it sounds like there there's a, a lot going on, a lot of options and, and uh... I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that November will bring a, uh, uh, shall we say, a positive surprise to West Virginia. We'll see. Uh, Ixia Vega, member of the Morgantown City Council. Thanks so much for dropping by, Ixia. Thank you so much for having me, Ix Ixia, excuse me. Uh, I-X-Y-A-A-A -A -A on Twitter and or Morgantown GOV. Uh, and thank you. Uh, thank we'll, you. Be, we'll be right back with uh, more of our conversation about what's going on also all across the country and around the world. Stick around. Donald Trump. Vladimir Putin, etc.